Maybe make noises like that on a on a roller coaster. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just sit there and keep quiet. But hey, a roller coaster is a function. I don't know if you think about it that way, but there's no two places where you could be at the same like two different places at one time. So and a visual would be on a graph like this. You can do that vertical line test and never will cross two points at the same time. So that's an example of a real life function. And today we're gonna to work on continuing working on functions that are linear. So linear functions, but both increasing and decreasing, seeing different ways you can write them and comparing them to each other. So our goal is to compare properties of two functions, each represented in different ways. So we're still looking at different ways, but um, focusing in on identifying rates of change from the, those different ways, the initial values from those different ways, and then being able to compare those things. So let's jump to the problem of the day. Uh, this is in your book on page 393. And it says a, a two-person research submarine starts at the ocean surface and begins to descend. So that means it goes down. The equation d equals negative 30t gives the submarine's elevation in meters as a function of time in minutes. At the same time, a whale begins to ascend, meaning it goes up. So descend is going down, ascend is going up. The whale's elevation at different times is given in the table. So here's our table for the whale. And here's our equation for the submarine. So what's the difference in the submarine's elevation and the whale's elevation at zero minutes? So in other words, at the start. Is the submarine or the whale traveling at a faster speed? So we've got two questions to answer. Something about the start, something about the speed. So what I'd like you guys to do is uh, read this through again on your own and try it. Try it on your own. So you can pause here and try. Answer those two questions. What's the difference in the um, elevation and which one is going faster? All right, so the way I looked at this was I knew that the whale, if you look at the, or sorry, the submarine first, if you look at the submarine, um, D equals negative 30T. So my submarine versus my whale. D equals negative 30T. That means that it's going, um, the rate or the speed is negative 30 we're doing meters per, per minute. Because it's given in the function, the equation d equals negative 30t. So that rate has to be the negative 30. And if it's a negative, that just shows that it's going down. Whereas the whale, the rate is, if you look, every four minutes, it goes up. So if you figure that out, that's to negative 600 would be 200, so 240. Every time it's plus 240, and every time this goes up 4. So my rate would be 240 meters per 4 minutes. And if you divide 240 by 4, you get 60 meters per minute. So which one goes faster? That would be the whale because it's going 60 meters per minute, whereas the submarine is going 30 meters per minute. So the whale is faster. That's one thing that answers the first, uh, the second question, sorry. So which one is faster? It is the whale. Now the second question was, what is your, your initial value, your elevation at zero? So in other words, what is your B? your y-intercept, the, the initial value. So for the submarine, there's nothing added at the end. So that means they're starting at the surface. That means they're starting at zero. So we're, it's how, how far from the surface. So there's zero depth. Whereas the B for the whale, it's starting lower and it's going up. So it's starting at negative 800 um, meters. So it's 800 meters below the surface where it's starting. So the difference there is 800 meters. They're 800 meters apart to start. All right. Which 
again, we're looking at two different functions written in two different ways and comparing them. And we have to look at different things, whether it's how to find the rate of change or the initial value. So in the book, if you turn the page, it does kind of say the same sort of things. If you use the table when time is zero, we're at negative 800 for the whale. And oh, for the first one, it was, it was zero. Um, oh, sorry, for zero meters for the uh for the submarine and then we're looking at the rate we did figure out that it was going 60 meters per minute the submarine it's the rate of change is negative 30 so you can compare those the the whale is definitely traveling faster so let's break that down with a couple of questions in the book so it says number one look at the first analyze it what is the difference between the whale's elevation and the submarine's elevation at zero minutes we kind of answered that it is 800 meters apart One's at zero, look at the surface, and one's 800 meters below. Number two, look at the second analyzer. Speed is never negative, even though it shows it at negative in the equation. Um, what's the rate of, or the way of change, the whale's rate of change is positive, but the submarines is given as negative. What does the sign, like the positive or negative sign of each represent in the situation? So when we're dealing with positive, it's going up, so it's ascending. can't have a negative speed but if you have a negative that just shows that it is descending so it's going down at that speed all right b write an inequality statement comparing this the absolute values of the rates is the submarine or the whale traveling at a faster speed so an inequality is which one is faster so we have the sub we have the whale the submarine was 30 the whale was 60 even though it's negative because it's going uh, or the submarine was negative because it was going down. The whale is going faster, so I'm going to open up that inequality symbol to the whale. So which one is greater? So it's the sub is less than the whale, or you can reverse it and write the whale is greater than the submarine. Question C, suppose the submarine's rate changes to negative 72 meters per minute. All right. Negative just means it's going down. The whale's rate stays the same. Describe the direction each is moving, which is traveling faster. So same direction, um, the sub is going down. The whale is going up. But the submarine is now faster. Because it's going over 60 miles per or meters per minute. And finally, D, suppose the whale is traveling at an average rate of negative 30 meters per minute. So this is the whale now. And the submarine is at, traveling at an average rate of negative 25 meters per minute. Describe the direction each is moving, which is traveling faster. Both down. Both are moving down because it's negative. And whichever one has a larger absolute value, that means that the this, this whale is going 30 miles per meters per minute the submarine is 20, uh, 25 so the whale is faster now so um why do you compare absolute values of rates of change when comparing increasing and decreasing functions um purpose is because the positive or negative doesn't necessarily describe the speed or the rate where uh here, I'll write that It usually describes direction, not speed. Can't have negative speed. That'll happen with a lot of things uh, with rates. Like if something's going down, your money's going down. It's going down at a certain rate, um, but the reason it's negative is because it's going down instead of increasing. So think about all the models we did today. Describe one of them that helped you. We're going to move on from that. You can think about that, though. What was the easiest way to do it? Um, what I'd like to look at is number five, a small business, a small business owner who uh, has two bank accounts. The first is a payroll account, which is the equation P equals 45,000 minus 250W. It represents the dollar amount in the payroll account as a function of time and weeks. The second has 8,000 at week with zero, and the business owner deposits 1,500 each week. So that one actually goes up. 
what is the total amount in the two accounts at week zero? So if we're comparing P equals 45,000 minus 2,500W. Now this is written in a different way from what we're used to. They have the rate part in the back. And um, the other one is if you wrote it out, if it's starting at 8,000, that says that it's um, whatever, we'll use P or it's not payroll, it's just going to be like a revenue. So we'll say Y equals 8,000 plus 1,500 per week. That starting value is now written in the front, which is fine. You can write it either way. Just noting, noting that that's not with the variable, so that is our initial value. So the second account, which one, which one has a, which one has the total, what is the total amount in the two accounts at week zero? So we would say forty-five thousand in one. It just happens to go down each week, and eight thousand in the other. That gets us a total of fifty-three thousand dollars they have to start the week uh, at week zero. And again, one account is going down, one account is going up. It looks like eventually. Since it's going down more than the other one's going up, they might run out of money, but we'll see. <clears throat> uh, number six, which statement is true? Select all that apply. A, the initial value of an increasing value is always less than the initial value of decreasing function. False. It has nothing to do with, the initial value doesn't always have anything to do with uh, whether it's increasing or de decreasing. That's more with the rate. B, you can use a rate of change to compare functions. Absolutely. You can see which one is increasing or decreasing by more. C, a line representing a function, an increasing function, will always be steeper than a line representing a decreasing function. That is false. It will just be a different direction. Not going to be, it could be steeper either way. Just going to be a different direction. D, absolute value can help you compare rates of change when at least one of them is decreasing. True, because um, we don't need the negative to compare the rates. That'll just tell us where they're going up or down. And E, the initial value of a proportional relationship is always one. That is false. We've seen initial values at lots of different things. So finally, the last one I'd like to look at on your own, preferably, is number seven. I want you to try this one. It says the table shows the amount of water in a large pool as it drains. The graph shows the rate in a small pool as it fills. Does the rate, does the rate, uh, does a large pool drain? Will the small pool fill at a faster rate? So we'd have to find the rates, the, the slopes, the slope of this one, the slope of this one. Um, rise of a run is way easier. So if I pick two points, um, let's go up 3,000 and over 2, which is the same as 1,500 over 1. So it's 1,500 gallons per hour. And the large pool, it's going down, um, but it's going down, it's almost 100,000, so that'd be 96,000 over 40. And if you know anything about dividing, you can cancel out the zeros, and it's 9,600 divided by 40. And I'm going to check that on my calculator to make sure we got it right. But 96,000 divided by 40 is 2,400. And if it's negative, it doesn't uh, it's just going down 2,400 per hour, which means that the the pool is draining at a faster rate. So the large pool would be our answer. Just because it's going down but 2,400 every minute, and the water the small pool is going up 1,500 every uh, sorry not minute every hour. So that's our lesson, uh, lesson 17 to comparing functions that are either decreasing or increasing by looking at the initial values and rates of change. We'll see you next time.